Well, thank you very much. Let's go to our executive director. Then you have a lot of items, so yeah, use right. your usual speed of speaking. Normally we're not done until 12.30, right? So 12.45. <laughs> but your speed of I, I talking, do that. you will be you'll be slow down. Um, so. Daily activity report is included. You can uh, see the items there if you have any questions on any of the meetings or various things that I've been doing. I'll be happy to answer those questions. If not, the next thing I'll get into here is... Uh, we have our uh, strategic plan, mostly our journey toward excellence, our internal uh, quality improvement and, and agency operations improvement projects going on all the time. There's, we have teams for it. We also have IT things we're working on. And this was reported <coughs> in another venue yesterday in the licensing committee. And so um, this is something that the uh, operations group, the IT group, has been working with the licensing team on, which was to fully automate or as as fully as we can um, put our firm applications online. In the process of uh, building that uh, online system, we didn't just take the paper one and stick it online. That's one thing you can do that, but it doesn't provide all kinds of optimization. But the team worked really hard coming up with a bunch of different scenarios and a bunch of different logic and streamlining it down. So now the process is almost fully automated as far as a firm application process. The stuff that's submitted goes through. Even the confirming of a uh, PE as a person on the firm is handled by the system. There's human oversight, but for the most part, it's not a lot of data entry. It's really been cut way down. So if you look at this little graph here, um, the, the real punchline is the point that is the next one not on the graph, and it's kind of hard to see a little bit, but the volumes have been pretty good as far as the firm applications have been coming in, but the amount of time to process them has been going down. The last two points are contribute a lot to the staff and the training and addition of people, but the one that is going to be in here next time, we're just a little short of the reporting period, it's down to nine days from what you would have seen would have been up in the close to 30 and stuff like that. So with the online system happening, and uh, we anticipate that it can continue to get more quick. So um, that's, a, 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 I think, a big success that the team was able to put together. We did a lot of pre-work, a lot of thinking, and put mm -hmm. it down so it's faster for the customers. They can get their firm registration mm -hmm. really quickly. Mm -hmm. They can kind of self, it's not self-certify, but they're able to interact with that instead of having things come in through the mail and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they added that, and they also added uh, late firm registrations, as, uh, late firm payments as well. So now they can pay the late online, don't have to write checks and things. So different things we're trying to do to enhance the process for all the customers out there. And <clears throat> it's flat out, it's nice when it's on a graph and you can count the beans and it's getting better. So mm -hmm. firm registrations are quick. And I know that was a complaint of people who come in and um, I need to get my company registered. I need to do work in the state. They can, they can they do, do it more quickly. quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other cool side effect of that is there's a lot of, um, I think, lessons learned in the design process and then what we used to optimize that we'll be able to use those on other of our online design projects as we move forward. So I just wanted to share that. So a big thanks to our operations team and the licensing mm -hmm. team for putting this together. Questions? Go on. Um, let's see, the next item. Sunset. The sunset, which I, I put this here in case we were going to talk about it or needed more discussion, but I think we're, we're aware of where that whole process is going. So I'll move through that one. The next one is the regional advisory meeting that uh, at the last meeting we discussed. Uh, the model we've been using where we did the Beaumont meeting and we've done the Midland meeting, the next one is going to be down the Rio, Rio Grande Point. Valley. So in the meantime, um, it, it was kind of a fortuitous and interesting uh, thing. I'll just put it as an aside. We decided we were going to go down to the Rio Grande Valley, and then we got new board members. And uh, Mr. Rubiano came on board, and we trained him and said, welcome to the board. Guess what? we got something for you to do. And You're so responsible now. I've had oh, a wow. huge number of phone calls with him, and uh, he's down there, boots on the ground, helping out. And it's been very, very, very helpful, and it's it's great having someone who knows all the, all the players down there. So we started our own little internal uh, team um, uh, communicating with uh, Bobby, with Mr. Rubiano, with Mundo and stuff like that. We're going to start getting that going. We met up with uh, Dean Kubaj from uh, UTRGV and he's very open to helping out. We're starting to look at locations and I've got some of their staff looking at where exactly to have it, who's available, what size and things like that. Please so, give a brief history to our new, new oh, board members yeah. about this um, this region. That we're so uh, I'll try and keep it to a Lance version of short. Um, in the in the past, we had uh, occasionally the, the board wanted to get out and have uh, more outreach directly as a board, not individual presentations. So in the past, we had done some board meetings in different locations around the state. And uh, for better or for worse, it, sometimes they were attended, but sometimes not so much. But the board still wanted to have an opportunity to get out and see different parts of Texas instead of everyone having to come to Austin. So we um, came up with the idea... Uh, 
a couple years ago to maybe we should have advisory meetings, kind of panel discussions and outreach opportunities in some of the, and I'll just use the phrase like lesser served areas, not basically the Dallas, the Houston, the San Antonio's and things like that. So we looked at different areas and we test piloted it over in, in Beaumont, um, working with Dr. Nijad and Lamar, and we went out there and <coughs> put together an event with uh, outreach for the PEs, um, outreach to the students at the university, and a wonderful panel discussion with the board members. And I think that was the most well received. Uh, they hear from staff giving our ethics presentations and how to get licensed. Everybody hears all that. But this was a great opportunity to answer some questions and actually engage from what do board members think about stuff. And it was very well received. So we scheduled uh, the next one. We're doing about two a year. Went out to Midland. Uh, from Mr. Norwood and Mr. Mm -hmm. Womack to get that to happen. Uh, worked with the university out there, spoke with a bunch of students, had a, the, a packed room at, at the center out there, and once again held another panel discussion, well received. And, and folks like it that we're able to come out to the areas where <coughs> we don't road less traveled kind of thing. So the next round is to go down to the valley and try and do a, a similar show. Each one is tailored and custom built, if you will, to uh, the student interaction, the university interaction, the local um, population, whoever's going to make it. So this one will be a custom design. We'll figure out the best location and the best way to interact with the UT system down there. And there's an A&M campus going on. And um, so it's we're working on right now. We're looking at some very late March to early mid-April kind of things. We want to get down there while the students are still uh, having got home for the summer and whatnot. So we're in the trying to find a room or rooms and a date, and then we'll get with everybody on their availability. So I want to put this out to you. In the meantime, you may get an invite from us that said, what's your date availabilities to go down there? As far as board members for the panel, it's voluntary. We invite everybody, and you can come down if you can. Um, and other than that, your obligation there is it's a, like a luncheon and about an hour, hour and a half worth of conversation and some Q&A, but often it's kind of a... What do you think about this? What do you think about that kind of thing? Well, we wanted to have a comment. I think the biggest difference in the Rio Grande Valley uh, meeting, because uh, I was at Beaumont and Men, and I think it is, is that the student base in the industry is going to be, may have to be separate because in Beaumont and Midland you had the university and the industry folks in one area. Here you have two areas, the Edward County and Cameron County, that have the student base that's an hour apart. And you want to make sure you get to the student base, but then the industry, they have the wherewithal to get somewhere. So it may be a little different. It's really exciting to see it happen. So I want you to work with uh, Rubiano and make it happen, okay? You're so you will be, yeah, I need you to work with him, so please call him and. Mr. Yeah. All right, so you have help. All right, all right, wonderful. I really have want to appreciate, thanks the board uh, for your support for this uh, advisory meeting. It's very good. So next one will be probably Panhandle, so I need somebody to step up and willing to take the charge. So think about that, all right? Continue. Keep going. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's Regional Advisory Committee meetings. Um, <coughs> the next one is NCWS National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. As I mentioned uh, last weekend, I was up at the Board President's Assembly with uh, uh, Mr. Bailly. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, there was uh, quite a number of agenda items, and this was this is a every other year meeting. Um, not it's not like a zone meeting or an annual meeting. It's just a, a smaller meeting, and they give a summary of things. So many of the things, since we're so engaged uh, with the council. We're already kind of well known, but we still participated in it. The items that were up, the top items for me, um, as Govind already mentioned, is the SE as a PE exam. Texas mm -hmm. does accept the SE. It's a 16-hour structure. We accept it as a PE. There are some states that seem to have a different interpretation of it, mm -hmm. even though the exam committees, my understanding, themselves think it is. Um, there seem to be some debate, some of it at different levels. So we'll see if this turns into anything or not. Um, I don't. Yeah, I think for the most part we consider it. If you can take a 16-hour exam and pass it, that's just as good or better than the 8-hour exam. But, the, yes. The big problem happened is AC, mm -hmm. ACCA committee has gone out and said that the 16-hour structural exam does not have enough bread. Well, so the two internal committees are... Uh, yeah. arguing against each other. Well, and that's very escalated. To be honest, as soon as someone brought it up, it became quite a conversation because right. there's a lot of size. Many, so many, many, many. as we move forward at the zone and the annual meetings, this will be a, a conversation. But right now, Texas does accept it as that exam. So that was one topic. Another one was accepting Washington Accord degrees, something also that Texas has done and many, many states do. This is an international accord um, on whether or not degrees from other countries 
can be acceptable. It's been something that's been around for decades and stuff, but some states still don't believe that they're necessarily um, substantially equivalent. So that was a conversation piece. Uh, international licensure and international compacts and things. Uh, there was a presentation and discussion there. Of course, Texas sets in a reasonable position there as we have MOUs and MRAs with other countries. Um, so we're looking to, for opinions on that. And the last one was a discussion of, of threats to safety, public safety and, and pr professional practice. Um, it's been often referred to as threats to licensure, but the issue here is not to preserve licensing of any sort of board or profession. It's the impact uh, that licensing has on protecting health and safety. And so there was a lot of discussion about that and a summary of the issues that are going on and pointing out once again that it is not about wrapping your arms around a license or a profession per se. It's the impact that this has and and how it would impact public safety if you were to modify that. So we had some discussions and presentations on that. Some um, other outreach things, and did you have anything you wanted to highlight? Or? Really, on the, the threats, I, I was there two years ago and this last one, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, so I thank you for uh, representing our board. And I think the biggest difference from two years ago to this, this year was just what Dr. Kinney was talking about, the threats to the profession, not just licensing, whether it's engineering or surveying, I think the boards from around the board presidents were were concerned that our profession our professions protect the, the public good, not just our licenses. So when this happens, we get commoditized. <coughs> what's next? So I think threats to the profession are across the nation as well. We're not the only ones in it. But then that brings what other boards concerned that I did here this time is. What are the de definitions of lobbying? We don't need to go into it or anything, but what can we do? Can we be on the offensive? Can we be on the defensive? <coughs> what are the de definitions of what we can or can't do? Because other states have the same restrictions. So it's getting up to NCWS to say, who's going who's gonna to represent us, or, or can we represent ourselves and how? So really interesting. A lot of the dialogue was not just at the meeting, it was in the networking sessions and when you're outside over lunch and dinner, you know, and so uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was good that we were, we were there. I appreciate the opportunity to represent us. Wonderful. And the other thing I'll mention at the very end, I got the last slot on the agenda, but uh, I'm the chair of a task force on public outreach. Uh, this was a, a nod and a recognition of all the things we've been doing and the board has encouraged us to do, including our regional events and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. people look to Texas knowing that we get out so much and speak to so many events and 23,000 people a year and stuff. So uh, we got to do that and I got a short presentation on what we're going to be doing in the future to engage with people. They didn't throw anything at them. They did not. No? I escaped right. alive, so that was a positive presentation. I was also last, so there weren't a lot of questions. Um, the next thing I want to mention uh, is... We, Chairman, uh, yes, please. Yes. Just uh, on the threat to the uh, public and lives uh, presentation, do they talk or mention anything about uh, the software? profession? Mm -hmm. At this meeting they did not. However, um, right before the meeting I was informed uh, Patty Mamola and I have uh, put together an idea and a proposal for the annual meeting uh, that will be coming up in D.C. this summer. And we've got, I think it's an hour and a half or a couple hours to put together a panel discussion and a presentation on um, It'll involve software engineering, but it's really engineering of the future and um, emerging technologies and how it impacts our licensure model. Um, the short punchline is our licensing model requires degree plans that have been uh, in place and approved, an exam that gets developed over a period of years, and a body of knowledge for practice. Um, as things keep evolving and happening faster, the licensing model doesn't necessarily keep up. Software mm -hmm. engineering recently was uh, an example of, of that, and so our panel is going to be thoughts. What are we going to do? How are we going to move this forward? But it has to become on people's radar because the traditional engineering disciplines are long standing and have had a lot of time to build the process. But the current model is it's difficult with something new. And software is not new, and yet it struggled and is struggling as it goes. So it'll be part of that. At this meeting, no one discussed software engineering. Though. So that dialogue is ongoing, so, right? And we're going to be leading that, that, leading that panel discussion. That discussion. So, so, software is uh, changing every day right. and it's destructive. It's, very, it's destructive it's, because it's uh, in, in a good way. And all the traditional engineering, uh, the, you know, the, their work make um, uh, are much easier with uh, advances in software. 
but there are still many, uh, I mean, critical software, mission critical software that are very, very uh, uh, important and affecting lives uh, and safety of the society. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just kind of finish that. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. very important, and, and CWS took a bite at it, and we didn't hit it on the target, so we need to see how does the profession and how does the licensure model adapt moving forward. So that's going to be a panel we're going to be able to lead and, and drive on that at the annual meeting. So when you sign up for the annual meeting, please go to that panel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, go there. Yeah. All right. Um, the next thing up is the, uh, between now and the annual meeting, there's the upcoming zone meeting. So I wanted to put this out. I don't believe the general invitation has been sent. Has yeah. anybody? Yeah. You have? It's, okay, yeah. 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 Okay, because I wish sure a different way. No. <laughs> you haven't heard about it. <laughs> said after that presentation, no way. Okay, so please register if you, if you want to. We've got some of the board members are going as funded delegates. Uh, we've got other members. The new members will all be uh, able to go as a funded first time delegate. So please. Mm -hmm. Uh, sign up if you need help signing up. Get hold of me or Christabel, and we'll make sure that all happens. That's um, NCWS's money. Not yes, and then all the <laughs> advisory members are also please encouraged to. Lance, uh, we have new executive director for NCWS. Yes, I'll be happy to make a. What type of uh, response are we getting from the new director? Um, so here's an interesting thing. So that's correct. Uh, Jerry Carter retired at the end of last year. To me, it was a foregone thing, but he'd been retiring for the year, and he finally, you know, packed up and headed off to the beach. <laughs> Literally, I called him one day, and that's where he was. Um, but David Cox was hired and as their new executive director. He transitioned for a short period of time, and now he's active, yeah. and he was there. Yeah. The good news is he was the executive director of the Kentucky Board, and he'd been very engaged as a uh, associate member for quite a long time, just like me and as a, as a uh, co-worker there. So he's a very known quantity as far as things, very open in communication, just as much as Jerry and the rest of the team have been. To my thought, David, if you know, did much of the NCWS team change? In fact, I don't think any of the top level. So that was a good thing, too. People didn't decide it was time to hit the road. So NCWS is still what it has been and was. Um, and David is, he stepped right in and he's, I mean, he's different than Jerry, but he's keeping the ball rolling. He didn't come in with any kind of great changes, things. So, uh, so, so, CPA. so he's doing a good job, was able to, but he, he didn't, the learning curve was almost non existent because he'd been there like the rest of us for a long time. So, David's going to do a good job there. So, please sign up for the uh, zone meeting. We'll have a real good representation up in Boise. Um, the next. Uh, this is just a, a flyer that was received, and they asked us to share it with the board members. So Chris Knotts, Southern Zone VP, I believe, is up next to possibly be NCAA's president-elect. Uh, Chris, once again, is a known quantity. We've worked with him quite a bit. So as we get to the annual meeting, we'll see um, where the votes go there. But here's his brochure. Any questions on any of the NCWS goodies? Okay, then I'll move on to the next thing. Uh, building plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, a while back, we had been instructed to look at uh, building upgrades, expansion, modifications, anticipating possible growth and whatnot. So we uh, engaged with the Texas Facilities Commission, um, worked through the contracts, got all that working, and so now we're in the first phase of facilities assessment and the beginning of potential options for design. They did come out already, according to, I've included the timeline here, but they've come out the various we've met with the engineering and architecture team uh, to introductions and we've shared our ideas on what we might do things we would like to have and need to have and like to have kind of things uh, then they came out and assessed the building each group the structural folks the mechanical everybody else looked at what we have did a ton of measurements to get an actual idea of where we are and so they're right off in the uh, design brainstorming and thinking section they're off doing their thing um, Mr. Bai, uh, after talking with Dr. Wong, will act as a kind of liaison on, on some of the ideas and stuff like that. So we're trying to schedule a meeting in early March. I think we had eight or ten, ten. eight of the tenth. Okay. So they'll be coming in and presenting initial thoughts. We've asked them for three different versions. One is leaving the building envelope the same. How can we change the inside of the building without making it bigger? The next one is a if you could make something, what would you make? And then the third one is more of a phased approach. How might we? do this in some middle ground and or it could be done over time and then to give us some cost estimates we'll bring that back as soon as we have that to the next pertinent board meeting and we'll be able to start working through that process so this is just the and at the end of the whole thing listed here by the middle of the summer we should be able to land on it we would like to do the following we'll have a good idea of the budget and then we'll head into what the board wants to do 
as far as uh, funding and construction. I want board members to actually give, give input, especially, you know, we've been around for a long time, you know how the building works, so please provide suggestions, especially during this brainstorm, and if anyone, anyone care to even join with them in terms of the session, yeah, you yeah, want to do that? So, so we so. We'll put uh, Mr. Shah, <laughs> Mr. Bai, so you will present us into the meeting. What happened? Going. Oh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. All right. So we have two, but but any board member, please, yeah. you have any uh, suggestion? So, please yeah. talk to. Can you can the blinds be updated? <laughs> exactly. Please, those input, please uh, send to um, uh, Lance. Go to Lance and let him collect all the information. So that's the time to do it. You know. So we want. We want a lot of things. So anyway, <laughs> the list does so, get quite. The list can go, but please have input, and so that we can start putting all of them together. Yeah, wonderful. So any of the, that's where we are right now. So any the questions or any questions, comments on that one? Um, <coughs> the last bit is just the standard outreach report. As I mentioned before. Uh, the team is out there doing more and more things. Michael's about to get qualified, and then he'll be thrown into the mix mm -hmm. as another outreach presenter. So everyone request him by name. <laughs> um, and that's for the public recording. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, Michael Sims will have a special drop down. Just wow. So, uh, <laughs> so you can tell he's overwhelmed. <laughs> Overjoyed. Wow. We put, no, a, um, we put a billboard there, man. Michael <laughs> Sims. Have you spoken to Michael today? Have you, put, yeah, exactly. have you seen Michael today? <laughs> oh, man. But, um, <laughs> Once again, um, our outreach, uh, our, our webinars are still highly successful that we're doing. We've, uh, we were doing them, four of them quarterly, all in like two days, and getting over 3,000 attendees for each of those time frames. And so uh, they fill up pretty quick. So now we're also doing interim ones. So we'll do um, quarterly, four of them, and then each month we're also doing one more. What was the attendance for the last one, 500-ish? 700. 700. And that's in the odd. Wow. That's in the odd, the off month. So um, we're making that available, and we're still out talking to tons of organizations, societies, schools, all kinds of stuff. So, um, Mr. Chairman, we got on the top ten list. Oh, uh, we're actually number national CEU provider. Uh, yeah. Once again, we can pat ourselves on the back. It's very funny at the NCWS meeting. They listed the top ten in the NCWS really? online uh, continuing ed program. Wow. We're number five. Red vector. Top outreach provider. <laughs> All these wow. Some of the other states actually had to change their rules to allow our training because they weren't they weren't accepting it. But they they're changing rules. And really? Things. Wow. Yeah. That's so amazing to know. A lot of boards to other states accepting something. Uh, correct. And uh, you know. another fun thing through my committee is they've asked us to do a webinar about webinars so we can teach other people. <laughs> I'm <gonna do> webinar. <laughs> so I'm going to do a webinar, webinar, whatever that might look like. Um, and cool. so this is our numbers, and the last one is uh, some thank yous. And um, we couldn't do this without the folks here at the office, uh, David, Rick, and all the other folks that are giving these presentations. Uh, and I want to acknowledge and publicly, it's not just the going out and giving the presentations. It's a day away from the office, and you have to catch up on all the things you could have been, would have been, should have been doing. Um, but they're out there talking to people um, every every week, pretty much. Someone's somewhere else. So I appreciate the hard work of the team and the doing emails at night and other stuff like that to make sure we can get out and talk to all the people we do. So thanks to the team for doing all that. and. Um, I think that concludes, minus questions, my report. All right. Further questions for Lance? Any questions, comments? Let's go to agenda number 15, agree board order. Michael. So uh, item 15 is agreed board orders. Uh, prior to this meeting, Mr. Tomlinson, who is the only one on this item, <laughs> decided he wanted to request a hearing at the State Office of Administrative Hearing, so we request to pass on this item. Any questions? You want to discuss anyone? Do you want to discuss this case? And no, he's going to SOA. Oh, he's yeah. going to SOA. Yeah, That's, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's going to SOA. So. Yeah. <coughs> Any comments? You don't need a... No, no, passing no he's that. still technically in process. Got it. So, do you need a like, motion on that? No. No, this we're is just, going just, to just reporting, it. basically. Okay. Right. All right. So, let's go to 